my name is Andy Sachs. I'm the team leader with the Around Town Real Estate team. We're the top ranked selling team across the entire state of Connecticut, across all brands. We're only about 12 agents strong, but we're pretty much all full time and we take a lot of pride in what we do. So I'm going to go through the kind of selling process. And then I'm going to touch on some really key points of what's happening in the market today, because it is unlike anything we have ever experienced, um, maybe ever, but definitely in the past 20 years. You see, the fundamental difference now, as we all know, is it started because of COVID. But what's sustaining this is good old fashioned capitalism, folks. And capitalism is maybe even more powerful than a pandemic. You see, with folks closing down major shops in New York and not needing as much square footage, they're shrinking their footprint telling their folks they only have to come to the city never, or maybe one or two times a week. And that's pushing folks out to a re-suburbanization. There's a lot of great articles out there that folks are gonna be pushed even to more rural areas and suburban sprawl might see new life in this new, uh, in this new era of real estate. But I'm gonna share my screen here and we're gonna jump into our selling process. And then we'll kind of hit some of the, the, uh, the topics um, on the back end that are kind of on everybody's mind. Uh, if you have any questions, by all means, uh, write a comment in the side. Uh, a couple of our agents are on today and they will be happy to um, uh, answer your questions during or after the presentation. As soon as I get this up, all right, here we go. So the purpose of this really is to discuss our home selling toolkit. That's uh, something you're, if you're, you're aligned with one of the agents that are on the call tonight, or have worked with other agents, they can send you our seller's toolkit. It's the kind of end all be all in the starting process of getting your home ready for market and, and navigating these kind of choppy waters or different waters that we're experiencing now. We'll talk about the hot topic and we'll do some Q and A. Guys, it all starts with the initial consultation, not unlike when you sit down with your accountant or your financial planner, we have more questions than I can, I can even take the time to bore you with tonight, but they're all crucial to helping understand what your goals are and where you want to go in this process. Your timing, the financial restrictions or desires, um, the, the, our home selling ideology, uh, getting an idea of the condition of your home and the care you've taken of that home is all going to go into maximizing the value we can realize in today's market. Uh, it's free, there's no strings attached, it's brutally honest and transparent. We want to give you as much information as possible, guys. We'd rather, you know, quite frankly, I sat, sat down with, you know, at this point, thousands of sellers over 15 years. Not all of them hired me, unfortunately, uh, but, but, but enough did to have me standing here tonight. And um, you know, I, I realized that treat this process as if we were your financial advisor, your accountant, or your, or your attorney, folks who have what's called trusted advisor status. And it's that trusted advising status that has led you to want to work with that, that professional. So we're gonna give you the transparency, the brutal honesty, whether you wanna hear it or not, because all that information is gonna help you make the best decision for you, your family and maximize value. Um, so we're gonna go through comparative market analysis. Um, we're not just gonna show you comps or things that kind of look like your home. We're, we're gonna dig deeper into the numbers. We've got a wonderful gal on our team, Jen Kelly, who has put together a ridiculous spreadsheet that might blow your mind, but it really gets into the nitty gritty of the why your home is priced where it is. Now, what we're factoring into pricing now is the rate of appreciation, which is a little bit hard to keep up with. So I'm not saying we're throwing darts in the dark, but all of our data is lagging, right? So we're taking that lagging data inside of an appreciating market. We're trying to then put a price for your home that's going to excite sellers and hopefully drive in this market multiple bid situation. Uh, hands down, guys, 15 years ago, if you ever sold a home, 20 years ago, there would just be one little picture at the front of the house. It would be placed in the local newspaper, and then we'd all sit around and pray for folks to come through the door. Well, as we all know, the advent of the internet and Zillow and truly at realtor.com, our great site, the aroundtownteam.com, it's fundamentally different now. And we get one chance to make a great impression. So it all starts with preparation. We have a home stager on our team. Tori is incredibly talented and fun to work with. She's part of our service. There's no additional fee to have her come out. Um, even if you think your home is perfect, she'll find something that will make a difference in how the pictures are presented and how a buyer feels as they move from the, through the house. And a lot of what we do really is addition by subtraction, the decluttering, the moving around of furniture, the getting rid of furniture, basic painting. We don't want you to incur mass amounts of cost, if any, and we try to avoid that when we can. Uh, the second 
benefit or the second stage of preparation is a team preview. Whenever possible and when sellers are comfortable, we have a team of 12 folks. Um, we all have, I think we're up over 100 buyers in our pipeline right now. So sometimes we can even sell it before hitting market. But we also, want, we also are able to get opinions of 12 other professionals before it even hits the market. And if we're hearing some reoccurring uh, themes from those 12 folks, we're able to then make recommendations to better position the property on the market before it hits the market. So when home staging is done, the team preview is done, we roll into professional photography. We've got a great staff of photographers that we've used for over a decade, um, some longer, uh, very talented, whether it be regular photography, videography, drone footage, 3D photography, depending what your home special features are will dictate what other factors of uh, media will employ. Once, once we have the videography done or the photography done, we'll go to market. Um, when we show the home, when we get a request to show the home, guys, we'll make sure that you are notified and you approve that showing. So we have a wonderful app called Showtime. The request will come into us. We'll then call or text you for confirmation that so-and-so would like to show the property at 2 o'clock on Sunday. If we don't hear back from you, if you don't confirm, we'll reach out again. But if we don't hear back, there will not be a showing. No one enters your home without our permission and your consent. Um, every buyer will be accompanied by a licensed professional. Sometimes we are on site to show it, but more times than night, quite frankly, because of time constraints, it will be the buyer's agent there to show it. Given the COVID life in which we are still living, but getting close to the end, I hope, um, folks have been very respectful of other people's homes. Um, everybody's taking their shoes off for the most part. People aren't touching things. We do recommend as home sellers, as you're prepping the home for sale, turn all the lights on, leave all the inter interior doors open or ajar. Basically, what we're trying to do is limit as much contact as possible. Uh, we discourage kids in the house when we're having showings. And if possible, um, especially in the heat of COVID, it is dying down a little bit now, but we're still being respectful. We're trying to have the agent in the house with only one buyer at a time. Again, it's just for safety precautions. Now, what we have experienced, guys, before I get to inspections, is on some price points, we're literally listing homes, and we're trying to list them all Thursday night into the weekend. But we're listing homes, let's say Thursday night. We're starting to show it Friday and hoping to accept offer or offers by the end of day Sunday. We're getting 20 to 50 plus showings in a 72 hour span in this market. So it's going to be a mass inconvenience, but we hope to wrap it up for you in a weekend if feasible and plausible. So we do suggest get out of the house if possible from nine in the morning to five, six, or seven at night. Um, obviously, that can be difficult, and we'll work with everybody's schedule, but we try to kind of make one weekend and, and get it done in this market. So we've shown the house, we've accepted an offer, and of course, guys, I'm glossing over kind of the offer process and things like that just to give you the high points of what we do. Um, but some of the preparation you'll hear us talk about oftentimes before we list the home is home inspection. That's one of the things, in, in my opinion, the most stressful part of the entire process, because we never know what to expect. There's going to be things, even though you've taken great care of your home, there could be a septic issue. It's underground. You're not going digging up your septic every, every day or every year. And I'm not just talking about pumping it. I'm talking about the fields and the distribution boxes. Those are things that we can't see and you're not typically paying attention to. But some of the most common things are chimney caps. So if your home is over 15 years old, oftentimes we run into a chimney cap that needs repair or replacement. Many of these things are small things, but in the eyes of a home buyer, they become bigger, right? Especially maybe a first time home buyer or you get an inspector that makes a bigger deal out of something that really doesn't need to be a big deal. So we recommend kind of going through a handful of these items and maybe even taking care of them up front. Because if all these small things are taken care of, a buyer is going to get a better sense of the care that the home has been through during your stewardship. So chimney caps, electrical panel. This is really, you know, it's kind of a silly thing. It's really inexpensive, but there's oftentimes double tap wires. There's two wires going into one breaker when the home was built and you never knew. Typically it's low voltage, but it's a code, it's a code uh, uh, requirement now. And whenever a buyer hears electrical, they kind of freak out. Uh, decks, if, it's, if you've been there long enough, it's no longer code compliant. Now we're not saying you need to bring things up to current day code, but it are, these are things that are gonna come up. So in a deck, oftentimes it's just adding a few more lag bolts or joist hangers, things like that to sure it up to today's code, things that aren't, Things that when a buyer looks at it, they say, oh, out of code, it's going to collapse, it's going to fall, it's a safety issue. We can, for inex a lot of times inexpensively, um, 
head off any irrational thought later. Radon, really common. We all know about it. Every buyer is going to test for it. It is a health and safety issue. Um, it's something that if you do have a system in place, make sure it's functioning. And if not, be prepared, I'd say 50% of the time to maybe, depending on the whole process or the whole uh, package of the sale, negotiate that. Water. We used to just test for coliform E. coli and radon, but we've now added uranium and arsenic. The buyer's inspector is going to take a bunch of water samples, take them to the lab. All these things can be remediated. And most people are used to hearing the word radon. They're used to hearing coliform, bacteria, E. coli. You shut, you chlorinate the system, you clean it out. But uranium and arsenic are kind of new buzzwords just in the past couple of years that kind of freak people out. And the cure for that is typically a point of use reverse osmosis system. It costs about $1,200. I'm not telling you to run out and test your water, but you could head off what is a perceived much bigger deal to a buyer now rather than waiting to hopefully you know, work with it later. And then make sure to service everything in advance. Your furnace, your AC, especially if they're older, get them serviced, guys. This will make the whole process go better. Little things that go a long way for home preparation, paint the garage, clean the garage, clean the, clean the basement, out, clean the furnace. Right? If someone comes down and sees a 20 year old first, like, ah, it's got five years left, but my God, that thing is shining. They know you take care of it. So, how we present even those little things to market is really, really important to get you top dollar. Now, the next phase is the appraisal. We've negotiated the sale, we've gotten through home inspections, and now the buyer is working through wrapping up their loan. And the biggest issue now that we're coming across is the appraisal process. Begin, as I said before, pricing your home is equally as difficult for the agent as it is for the appraiser. All their data is lagging. So they're looking at all these past sales over the past couple months, but each month the sales have gone up in price. So they then have to put on their sheet a, a relative an acceptable rate of appreciation that the bank is going to be like, okay, that makes sense, right? Because the bank doesn't want to make a loan that gets foreclosed upon one day. They go back and look at the file. They look at the appraiser's name, look at the appraiser's report. And if they deem that to be a bad report and the due diligence ones are done, that appraiser is actually held liable to some extent. So the appraisers want to be relatively um, conservative, but the same token, banks want to make loans. So in the appraisal process, myself or one of our agents will be typically be on site. Um, at the very least, the other agent will be, and we'll supply them with all the comps that we think will make the home appraise out in the sale process for the mortgage. Um, for the appraisal, we want the home to look just as good as it did when we were showing the home on that, that weekend of showings. We want the appraiser to come and go, oh my God, that's the shiniest furnace I've ever seen, right? He, we need to give him the feeling of rainbows and butterflies as well. Closing checklist. And again, if you guys would like, we can send a, a much more robust packet than just what I'm reviewing today. Um, but in a nutshell, gather all the closing documents with your attorney, have everything executed, notify everyone you're moving. Don't forget to tell grandma you're moving. She'll, she'll be upset when she comes over for dinner the next weekend. Cancel your insurance, transition to the new house, utilities, clean the house. Now, by typically in the, in the contracts, it says the home must be left broom clean. Leave some good karma behind. Have the, if, you, if you're able to afford it, have a cleaning crew come in, or if you're able to thoroughly clean the house for the new buyers, um, they're going to come through and do a walkthrough. And the walkthrough always goes better when things are spick and span. Put all the keys and remotes in one place, typically a kitchen drawer. Please let us know where you keep them so we're not hunting for them later. Collect all the manuals, warranties, receipts for appliances, anything you have, put them in the envelope. It's a really nice gesture for the next owner. Personally, look over everything one last time. Check all the water, make sure it's running. I just had a closing this morning. The wire hit. It's supposed to close yesterday. The wire hit in the morning. I got a call a half hour the wire hit from the buyer's agent. There's no hot water upstairs. Now, it's the buyer's house now. So he's got to deal with it, but we're trying to get it worked out. The seller, he's got his plumber going over. Um, the buyer never went through and did, uh, the, the buyer's agent never took them through a good walkthrough and checked all the water and things like that before closing. So, so you don't get caught with any of that on the back end as a seller, please check the water, check the heat, check the AC, run it all, do a, your own little walkthrough as if you were buying it. Um, and then finally, lock everything up, close it up, walk away, head over to the closing table, guys. So I just spoke a ton before I jump into some of the hot topic stuff, which I think everyone's most interested in, does anybody have any initial questions or anything that I can, I can answer? All right. So some of the common questions we're getting is what if I need to buy 
a home in the same market in which I'm selling. So you're selling at the peak of the market and you're buying at the peak of the market. And that kind of goes hand in hand with the next one. What if I need to sell in order to buy? And there's low inventory. And this is where the log jam of our market's really happening right now is we have more people than we can even you know, shake a stick at that want to sell their home right now, but they're afraid because they don't know where to go. They don't, they believe there's going to be enough inventory for them to look at and find their next home. Um, so in one regard, guys, you got to take a leap of faith. You got to get out there. You got to look for homes. And one way we can protect you a little bit on that end is we can make your home subject to seller finding suitable housing or have a very long closing date. That seemed to be working right now. And what I can tell you from 15 years of doing this is it typically always works out. Whether you end up renting something, um, and I want to talk about that in a second also, whether you end up renting something, buying something, negotiating a longer close, closing and renting back for a couple months is sometimes an opportunity. Um, it, it works out. You kind of got to have faith in the process that it's going to work out. There is definitely more inventory coming to market. Um, an extreme example, let's say there's 20 people for every buyer right now, so 20 buyers for every listing right now. I expect come April, May, there's going to be 10 buyers for every listing. Not because the buyer pool is shrinking, but because the inventory is going to rise. Enough people are feeling a little bit safer with COVID, getting their shots, they're ready to move on. And a lot of our, a lot of our moves are generational moves. Um, just statistically based, baby boom generation, they're, they're aging out of their properties. They want to either head south, downsize, whatever it might be. Um, and a lot of those folks in, in that age group, um, and, and the studies will show it also, we're just kind of waiting for the vaccine to come around. And, and it's, a lot of them are inoculated, so we're going to see a good uptick of, um, of seller activity. Um, if you have to sell in order to buy, it does complicate things, but it's not impossible. You will, you, you, we've got to, the best thing you have to do though is get your home on the market and under deposit and through inspections at the very least. So that when we go to present a buyer, a uh, seller, um, your offer for their home potentially, we can say, listen, it's all wrapped up. We're literally just waiting to find our house for these folks. So we, don't, we, we possibly can waive a contingency um, for the home sale contingency to buy that house. Because with so much competition, it puts us in a little bit of a disadvantage, but it's certainly feasible. Um, one advantage of working with us is we often have a lot of inventory that folks want to sell, but it's not coming to market. So oftentimes we have back end, what's called a pocket listing, that folks are able to kind of look through. Folks says, I do not want to be on the MLS. They've signed the appropriate um, paperwork saying we don't want that, but if you bring me a buyer, we'll talk to you. Um, and then we talked a little bit already, what if I don't really want people coming through my house? Uh, it, we're not seeing as much of that now, but we do have some folks who are like, listen, virtual tours only, or I'm going to leave for two days. You have two days to show this thing. And then my cleaning crew is coming in and I'm coming back in. If you haven't sold it, we're done. So that's a, it's a little bit extreme, but it's happened. Um, and that's kind of in a nutshell, what it is to sell property in 2021 pandemic land, Fairfield County and the surrounding areas. Um, that's my spiel. Well, does anybody have any questions or anything I can address? Appreciate you guys coming on. Any rumors I can dispel for you or, or even validate? All right, going once, going twice, sold. Guys, I appreciate everybody being on the call tonight. It's just a quick overview of kind of our team, our process and what's going on in the market. Guys, historically, there's never been a better time to sell real estate. And I sound like a used car salesman, uh, not to knock that industry. Um, and I kind of always hate talking like this, but historically, there literally has never been one. We don't know how long this will last. I do suspect at least in our 12 to 18 months, this kind of intensity. And then it's got to imagine it's going to flatten out a little bit. But a lot of it will depend upon how deep of a systemic change America is going to work, a change of how America goes to work has really taken place. Are they going to have to go back to the city? Are they going to be able to work from home? And if that's the case, they're going to be able to continue to sprawl out further in suburbia. Appreciate everybody joining. Thank you so much. My name is Andy Sachs and the Roundtown team. Look forward to working with you all. Take care.